Welcome back to Channel News Asia's coverage of the first U.S. presidential debate. We brought it to you live earlier on U.S. President Barack Obama versus Mitt Romney in Denver, Colorado. Here with me are my two guests from both sides of the aisle. Jeffrey D. Straussman, uh, Professor and Vice Dean of Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy here in Singapore, and John Johan Kim, uh, Co-Chair of Romney Victory Singapore. Uh, gentlemen, uh, both candidates uh, clashed straight off the bat on taxes. Uh, both agreed they want to help small business owners, but President Obama pointed out that his definition of small business uh, enterprise is different from that of Mitt Romney's. First, we're going to have a soundbite, and then I'm going to get your views. We do have a difference, though, when it comes to definitions of small business. You know, under, under my plan, 97% of small businesses would not see uh, their income taxes go up. Governor Romney says, well, those top 3%, they're the job creators, they'd be burdened. But under Governor Romney's uh, definition, there are a whole bunch of millionaires and billionaires who are small businesses. John, we'll come to you first, uh, perhaps, to respond to Obama's uh, comment there. What did you make of it? What is uh, Romney's position on this? Uh, they rambled on for a long period of time, so we're great that you have you in the studio to, to break it all down for us. Absolutely. I mean, it's pretty simple. Uh, basically, small businesses employ about half, 51% of all the Americans that have jobs uh, in the country today. So <clears throat> in order to kind of uh, make his statement a little bit more uh, politically uh, uh, palatable, uh, President Obama effectively said that he will cut taxes for 97% of small businesses. So the top 3%, which he said includes people like Donald Trump, who are millionaires and billionaires and so forth, um, he would increase his taxes on, on those businesses. Uh, <clears throat> the thing is, which, which uh, Governor Romney alluded to later, the thing is that those top 3%, they actually employ half the, the, the employees that all small businesses employ. So that's 25% of all the jobs in the country. So effectively what you're saying is you want to, you want to increase taxes on companies that employ 25% of uh, Americans. So that's really where the definition is slightly different. And, and he's saying that will then discourage them to employ more people. Exactly. That's, that makes America less competitive. Okay. Jeff. Steve, I look at this totally differently. I look at this in terms of politics. They're both appealing to their respective base. When President Obama said what he said about small businesses, what he was really saying is, I care about the middle class, I care about the average American. The reference to Donald Trump was not accidental. The people in that 3% that John is referring to are going to vote Republican. So he wants to make sure those Democratic voters turn out, and that's what his message was. Is he also trying to reach out to those that are undecided, or the soft partisans perhaps? Is he thinking he can sway them with that argument? I don't think either one, either Romney or Obama, can sway those people that are so-called independents, undecided at this point. The facts are, and political sciences have shown this year after year after year, that many of the people who say they're undecided now are not likely to vote. So by that definition, you think it's not going to make a difference? Though? I don't think it's make, make a difference. I think most of the American voters at this point have made up their minds. Therefore, both of the uh, candidates right now have respective goals, and this was not a boxy match, as Simon Morris <coughs> seemed to portray it. This was the president trying to be presidential and Romney trying to come from behind. And I think actually he did a pretty good job. I would agree with John and I agree with some of the Republicans that are quite pleased with the way Romney performed. John, would you agree with that, that Romney came off more presidential as a result of this debate? That's not what I said. The president was uh, presidential. Uh, that Romney matched him perhaps. Uh, so I, I think so. His, his standing. Absolutely. I think he did a, a very good job. I think he actually did look very pre presidential. I think he did a fantastic job in projecting strength. He was confident. Um, he actually, at the same time, was able to get some, uh, some talk in there about how he's collaborative in his governing style in Massachusetts with an 87% legislature of, full of Democrats. At the same time, I think he did a very good job connecting with people, uh, a little bit better than what he's been used to doing. If you look uh, at, at the comments that President Obama made to kind of connect with the people, he started off talking about his wife and their anniversary, uh, to which Governor Romney made an immediate joke uh, back. So that's, you know, even score. Then he started talking about his grandmother. Uh, well, Governor talked Romney about his sons as well. Talked, yeah, Governor Romney exactly talked about his sons. By the way, by the way, Matt Romney, uh, Governor Romney's son, was in Singapore. We had a chance to meet him, and he said that uh, his father had very good uh, debate prep because he had five 
uh, adolescent teenagers. So uh, I think that's all, that's all uh, stuff that appeals to the public. Also, you know, the, the comments about uh, liking Big Bird and even liking you, Jim Lair, you know, all this stuff. Uh, I think he did a very good job connecting with people and, and being comfortable on stage. Do you think that would have endeared him? No. I think lower and middle class people have their kids watching public TV. You're going to hear that Big Bird comment again and again and again, and it's going to show up in negative ads in the battleground states. It's going to show what the Obama administration wants to show over and over and over again, which is that Romney doesn't care about you. And so the subtext throughout this whole debate was that particular message that the Obama people wanted to get across, and I think they got it across. Okay, we talked about the humanizing of Mitt Romney. Uh, you alluded to it there. Obama did take a jab at his millionaire status, so we've got a bite which will lead us into our discussion on tax and budget deficit. Uh, let's take a listen on that. The president's put it in place as much public debt, almost as much debt held by the public as all prior presidents combined. Now, what did you make of that, that statement there, John? Well, it's... it's uh yeah, when you say almost, I guess it's a relative term, but it's true. I mean, uh, I think when he got into office, there was uh, just about $10 trillion uh, of public debt at the federal level, and uh, we're just over $16 trillion now, so it's, it's pretty close. I mean, there's no doubt that uh, public debt has increased uh, over the time that Obama has been uh, in, in office. Now, some people, a common argument is that, uh, well, he couldn't have done much about it, his hands were tied. Uh, but in actuality, you know, over the course of the first two years, he had a congressional majority, so he could have worked on whatever he wanted. But it wasn't the deficit. You know, in fact, he worked on health care and he worked on regulation through Dodd-Frank. So it shows where his priorities are, which is something that came out a lot in the debate. The, the budgets, where you spend your money, where you spend your time, that's really what you care about. And he doesn't care about the economy. He showed but, that the budget and choice was something that Obama touched on. Uh, Jeff, did you want to say something? Well, yeah. First of all, back to the previous question about debt. I think most people <clears throat> wouldn't have, uh, cannot understand what Romney said. Um, basically, debt goes up when the deficit widens and the government has to borrow to finance that deficit. That's why debt goes up. During the whole four years of the Obama administration, the deficit widened because of the economy, which was inherited by, uh, from the Bush administration. To finance that deficit, one has to incur debt. Obama so, was talking about the wars. About, exactly. About and, the and when he said finance those wars without uh, raising taxes, which is the way wars historically are, are, are fought and financed. But that's not what the Bush administration did. Um, uh, and so I think that that particular point about debt is going to go nowhere because I think it's too difficult to truly understand. Too difficult to understand, but we need to break it down and, and, and think about that a bit more, though. Uh, do you think Obama pushed back against uh, Romney's claim that he wasn't doing his job for the last four years? As with regard to, the, to this deficit? Well, to, from my point of view, it's, it was a di difficult balancing act for the president. Uh, he needed to be presidential. He needed to uh, not be scolding. He needed to not be condescending. And I think in retrospect, what, what, what his advisor is going to say is the next time around, you have to take the risk and be a little bit more forceful. I think he should have pushed back more. Um, uh, that was the stance that Romney took. Romney came out like a prize fighter, uh, but he had no place to go but up. Uh, John, just wanted to touch on, uh, you're the co-chair for the uh, Romney Victory uh, Singapore. Just tell us a bit about that. And, and obviously the words victory in there, perhaps with this debate in mind, it looks like uh, you're one up. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Romney Victory is basically the fundraising arm for uh, the governor here in Singapore. Uh, it's a global organization, but the, the branch here in Singapore is, is the organization that I'm the co-chair of. Uh, you know, before this this debate, uh, I was getting a lot of slack from people at the office saying, oh, you, you backed the wrong horse and so forth. Uh, and it's been an interesting process because uh, the traditional media tends to give a certain bias. Uh, the conference calls that I've been on with Boston have given a different bias. I think uh, the other day I was thinking about what the most objective source of information might be, and I went on Intrade, uh, which is one of the betting websites. And lo and behold, Governor Romney had about a 30 percent chance, and, and President Obama had 70 percent chance. So I think it'll be really interesting. I would be very surprised if uh, Governor Romney's odds didn't go up uh, in the coming days and months. Uh, Jeff? Well, actually, I agree with John. I think that the, I think the race is tight, and I think it's going to get tighter a, a, after this debate. But the fact of the matter is that that those who studied the electoral uh, distribution across the country show that Romney has a very narrow path 
to beating Obama. And uh, Obama is way ahead in Pennsylvania. He's pulled away in Ohio. Uh, yeah, he's Florida, uh, in so. Florida. He's pulled away in Florida. I think uh, he did very well on uh, Social Security and Medicare in this debate, uh, which uh, your commentator seemed to not appreciate uh, in Denver, Mr. Marks. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, when we look at some of uh, the, the, those effects, we'll see that the electoral map still looks pretty good for Obama. Okay, and just coming back to Romney, uh, he was criticized before going into this debate. He wasn't specific enough, uh, didn't lay down what he wanted to do. But in this debate, we saw him like reel off, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do this. Uh, maybe he didn't was short on the detail but because of the time, but were you happy with the way that, that he sort of corrected himself then? Uh, absolutely. I, I think, uh, as he mentioned, it's important to get the broad principles. When he ran for governor, by the way, he, he followed all of, through with all of his campaign promises. You know, uh, President Obama, he promised to cut the deficit in half. He hasn't done that. Actually, when he came into office, he said, I'm going to improve the economy and uh, get it back on track. Fourteen months in, he said, if I don't get this done, I will be a one-term president. Well, he hasn't gotten it done, and he's probably going to be a one-term president. Okay, and your final thoughts, Jeff, before we have Well, to he's not going to be a one-term uh, president. Uh, I think the electoral picture still looks very good. I think the state, the battleground states are, have been trending for Obama. I think they're going to continue to uh, trend for Obama, and I think he's going to probably get somewhere around uh, 300 electoral votes at the end, okay. and he'll be re-elected. How would you score this debate quickly? Who was the winner here? Romney, clearly, for both of you? Not Definitely. for me. No, not I don't think so. No, I think not thinking in those terms? I think no. clearly Romney. For, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, you can see the debate's going to go on in the studio. <laughs> the debate's going to go on as well out there. I would like to thank both my guests, uh, Jeffrey D. Strassman, Professor and Vice Dean at the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy here in Singapore, and John Johan Kim, co-chair of the Romney Victory Singapore. Now you know what that is all about. We leave the White House race here for now and look forward to you joining us for the next debate. That's happening next week, October the 11th in Danville, Kentucky, between U.S. Vice President Candidate Joe Biden and Paul Ryan, Youth Against Age. We'll see how that one goes out. Youth and experience, I should say. I'm Steve Lai. See you then.